As John said, thanks for the introduction, John. I appreciate it. Um, one of the things that I did want to go over, a few of the things, obviously I want to go over the Rapid RH. Um, that's exclusively, exclusively what I am responsible for uh, in that uh, the concrete moisture testing. Um, I have been involved in it since pretty much day one and before when we first came out with the original blue ones. Um, one of the things that I do like to start off with is it's amazing in the last six or seven years what's physically transpired in uh, moisture testing in concrete, how it's transitioned from what some people are still doing, but how, how it's transitioned to people and the greater acceptance of relative humidity. Um, I, usually, I usually start off with a story, and if anybody's been to, the, to our booth, about five years ago at World of Concrete, we actually had a... Uh, a gentleman come up. It was somewhat dead. And he was an older gentleman. Very nice. He walked up, and this was back, way back. And we had, we had this uh, demo of the probe inside there. And he walked up, and he got real close to it. And he looked at it. And he looked up at me, and he said, what is it? And I said, well, it's a device for testing moisture in, in concrete. And he looks at me, and he goes, and walks off. And so there was nobody there, and I had to, I had to bring him back, because I just had to know. I, I, I had to know. You know, the guy looked like he'd been doing it for probably 50 years. I mean, obviously, he's older than I am, got a lot of information in his head. So he comes up, and he goes, well, I said, well, just tell me. He goes, well, you know, the reason why, or the reason why I was like that is because you know how I moisture test. And I said, no. I said, how do you moisture test? And he goes, I smoke. Okay. He said, I stand in the middle. To make a difference how many square feet it is. I stand in the middle of the slab. I light five cigarettes. And I turn the room like this. If one of the cigarettes goes out, I have a moisture issue. <clears throat> now, I guess when I look at that, you know, we had a good laugh about it. and It was just one of those things. But, I mean, seriously, in the last five or six years, how things have transitioned to the relative humidity testing and people understanding the, real, the true implications to that um, to, to doing the testing and actually understanding physically what's going on in the concrete. So typically what I'll go over after my, my wonderful story, typically what I'll go over is I will go, I will go over the method. The method of testing relative humidity in concrete. As most all of you know, it's a reference under ASTM F2170. And what we're trying to do with this method of testing is we're trying to give the industry the ability to physically see what's going on in the concrete at a 40% or about mid-depth of the concrete slab so that we can actually help you guys predict what's going to happen once you put a finished floor covering on top. Now, the one thing I am going to repeat there, we're giving you the ability to predict so that before you put all the, all the money into the finished floor product, the adhesives, the, the, the floor prep, the other things that you will do, with a relative humidity uh, testing, you do have the ability to have a better predictor than you would have with some of the other methods that are on the, on the market. And believe me, with as many tests or as many shows as we go to, the method of testing, up to including the cigarette test, <coughs> you hear them all. But this is what you're seeing, the marketplace, and you're seeing a lot of the people that actually do the concrete testing, the installing, things like that. You're seeing that move more and more and faster and faster as time goes on. Now, specifically with this product, one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to give the installers, the industry, we're trying to give them the ability to get a very fast and a very accurate reading. One of the reasons for that is because of if you are able to look down here, and we can get in deeper to this if somebody wants to or if somebody wants to come by the booth, but one of the things we actually do is we actually have the ability to test a very, very small void of, of air that is truly at that 40% depth given the fact that the, drill is, the, the hole is drilled appropriately. The other side of what we have is we have what we call touch and sense, sense technology. We have the ability, and I'm going to try to do this on the camera, we have the ability that once this product is actually installed, and again, I have the slab here, so I'm going to do a full demo on this, but once we have the actual uh, sensor installed into the concrete, 
All you have to do, doesn't make any difference which way you put it in there, all you have to do is put that in and it will immediately give you a reading that's going to give you the relative humidity at that critical 40% depth and it'll toggle back and forth between the temperature. So I think uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to do the fun part. I get to do the, I get to do the fun part. Yeah. Let's pull that back up. Now, one of the things I did prior to, and usually what I'll tell when I'm on job sites and stuff like that, what I will tell people is, and you'll see this in our installation video, is the easiest way, once you have determined the thickness of the concrete, the easiest way to actually mark so you have a visual reference when you're drilling is typically is to, is to, to measure back your 40% on the drill bit. And typically what I'll do is I'll just take a black Sharpie and then just take some kind of electrical tape, some kind of uh, you know, duct tape, something along those lines that when this thing is actually drilling at a high RPM, you can actually have an idea where things are at. So once, you've, once you have actually referenced, and again, the ASTM standard is going to say 40% of the slab thickness if the, prod, or if the concrete is, is on grade, or basically drying from one side. So if you have something on grade or elevated in pan decking, that there is no breathability from both sides. If, if it is a structural slab, the standard actually only reads that you have to drill it 20% of the slab thickness. So once you have the hole drilled, we actually have in the kit, we actually have a vacuum attachment that comes with the starter kit. One is to do the actual first stage of the, of the hole from the top. The other piece, you can actually get down deep inside. One of the things that's very critical about that is you'd be surprised if you've never done one of these, physically how much, once you do an initial, once you do an initial vacuum, how much dust and, and how much pulverized concrete is still left in there. So the other part that we have that comes with the kit is a brush. Typically what we'll recommend is we'll recommend that you do a surface vacuum like that. It actually does look fairly clean, but if you can zoom in on this, we'll see how good we can do. You, you'd be surprised at how much actually physically comes out of it. So we'll typically recommend you go through and do that a couple times. For the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it once. But what'll happen is once you when you when you actually drill into the concrete, obviously you create a lot of heat, and any of that pulverized concrete will actually stick to the walls of that hole, and that can potentially have some impact on the on the readings down the road. So once you have everything vacuumed out, you're good to go. We actually have an insertion tool. Take one of the sensors, put it on the insertion tool. Now, it's going to be a tight fit. You push it down until it bottoms out. You can use, you can use a, if you have to use something to lightly tap it with, it's fine. It's actually designed to physically, <coughs> this is a big enough diameter that it doesn't come in contact with any of the sensing devices on the bottom, or any of the pads on the bottom of the, of the sensor. So, once you're actually done with that, there's two pieces that come in the starter kit. You have a cap to protect it, and then you have a stem for stabilization in the hole. It goes down into the hole, snaps in, and that's your finished product. Now, I can tell you that a lot of the people that I have using these things, they will do that. They will go install the rest of their sensors, <coughs> and but when they're through installing whatever that number is, they will come back here and they will actually take this off and look to at least see physically 
where the, where the relative humidity reading is in the concrete. Now, for most, for most of you, I'm sure there's a lot of you that do know this, but for most of you, the ASTM standard actually reads 75% or less is acceptable, acceptable for resilient covering. Most of, the, most of the finished floor products that are out there, that's about where they started. As time has gone on, much like the calcium chloride test when they originally did it, originally did it, ASTM still reads, you know, the three pounds. So when you look at that, different manufacturers have gone out, done the testing to find out physically what their product will withstand, so, so insulation standards for different products have, have changed. But typically what my, what my installers are looking for, my general contractors, my flooring, flooring contractors, they will physically go after they've installed them and at least have a look to see what it is that they're dealing with. Now, ASTM standard says, documented in your job file, it's a three-day test. But when you physically look at this and you look at how the numbers get from within an hour to that three-day mark, you have a pretty good idea in about an hour where you're going to end up in three days. And it's all based on the design of the product. So this one was poured, and again, we just installed it. This one was actually poured last week at World of Concrete, so it's about a week old, and it's sitting at 81% relative humidity right now. Again, this thing's technically drying, drying, from, both, drying from both sides. So, well, I, no, no, but I'm also saying that, that, that we're, we've drilled it differently, and, but I'm just, I'm just trying to give an idea. Um, the, the, and what Ron pointed out, that's a good point, this actually, they had put some different additives in this. It's got a fast drying agent in it, so it's a fast dry concrete. But again, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that the guys will use it for is they will physically have, a, have, a, have an idea within about an hour where they're at. Now, I don't mean in, at three days, four days, five days, whatever, they come back and get a reading, but at least it gives them the, the ability to have some type of intelligent business discussion with the general contractor, with the, the building owner. Um, the other nice thing is, you put this thing in. Let's say it comes up that it's high. You know, it's 90 plus percent relative humidity, which, I mean, realistically, we see a lot. So you can come back in a month, two months, whatever the time is going to allow, and you don't have to worry about resetting another test. If it comes in high, take this, put it back on there, and you're done come back anytime you want. I have flooring contractors that will actually give these to the GCs. And they'll say, hey, floor's wet. Why don't you call me uh, when that number hits 75? Um, you know, they get into those kind of discussions and it gives them a little bit more, uh, a little bit more ability to, to, to know what's going on. Again, you're not going to have those same issues of a surface test. You're not going to have the issue with, uh, you put something on the surface and really I don't care if it's a hood test with uh, relative humidity or calcium chloride or what it is, but what you come down to, it's almost like a target. It's a bullseye. People want to run it over. People want to kick it. People want to do something to it. So, you know, somebody will set four or five surface tests. They'll come back. They may have one or two that actually make it. This, you don't have to worry about it. Below surface, much better reading, and it's going to give you guys a better idea, especially from the insulation standpoint. It's going to give you guys a better idea physically what's going to happen once you encapsulate that concrete. That's the key to the whole thing. So I guess, wow, I went a lot faster than I thought I was going to. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to take this, take this and uh, open it up to you guys and find out if you guys have any questions, um, whether they're for Ron or for myself. Um, you know, I can get deeper into the, to the uh, concrete uh, surface conditions as far as that kind of testing and stuff like that. But does anybody have any questions?